Let us begin with a normal electrocardiographic representation, which is represented by a P wave, which is related to the atrial activity. Then we have the QRS complex, which represents ventricular depolarization. Followed by that, we have the ST segment, and after that, the T wave, which represents ventricular repolarization. The acute changes related to myocardial ischemia or infarction are focused on the ST segment and the T wave. The earliest changes, that is within minutes of occlusion of a coronary artery, the first change that we would see would be straightening of the ST segment, blending with the upstroke of the T wave along with the T wave being lifted from the baseline. Then after several minutes, the ST segment is elevated considerably from the baseline along with lifting of the T wave. The ST segment elevation could range anywhere from 2 millimeters to as much as uh, 15 to 20 millimeters. The height of ST elevation doesn't necessarily signify the degree of myocardial damage. However, an acute ST elevation which was not there before is highly suggestive of uh, acute myocardial ischemia. It doesn't necessarily suggest myocardial infarction at this stage as acute coronary spasm can produce ST elevation which will resolve after the relief of the coronary spasm. So in a sense ST segment elevation is a sign of uh, acute myocardial ischemia or injury. That's one of the reasons we see ST elevation in patients with acute pericarditis because of the inflammation of the underlying myocardium that is seen during diffuse pericarditis. The ST changes that we see in an acute pericarditis is quite different from a localized myocardial infarction in that the ST segment is noted in throughout the 12 lead electrocardiogram. After several hours of coronary occlusion, the T wave becomes inverted and the ST segment uh, is coving upwards. This is a very important point to differentiate a patient with acute pericarditis whose uh, ST segment is not only elevated but it is coving downward. It's like a downslope of an ST segment. So that should help us to differentiate between an ST segment related to acute coronary ischemia versus a pericarditis which is generally noted in multiple leads involving different regions of the myocardium. It takes approximately six hours of continuous myocardial ischemia in order for the development of Q waves. So if you already see Q waves in association with ST segment elevation and T wave inversion, then that myocardial infarction is not hyper acute because it has taken almost six hours for development of the Q waves. So using these criteria, we should be able to differentiate an hyperacute myocardial infarction where there is no development of Q wave except for ST elevation and T wave lifting from the baseline versus a transmural myocardial infarction or damage which is signified by the development of the Q waves. There are many variations in Q waves uh, that uh, we need to differentiate. The differential diagnosis of Q waves or the presence of uh, bundle blanch block, the presence of uh, pulmonary embolus 
and a few other conditions. Sometimes normally we can see a tiny Q wave in lead 3. However, the Q wave has to be more than 25% of the height of the R wave and cover at least 40 milliseconds or one box width in order for it to be considered pathological Q wave. Another clue to consider a Q wave to be pathological would be if we see Q wave changes in groups of leads that represent a particular region such as the entroseptal area, the inferior wall or the lateral wall. Over a period of uh, several hours to almost six months, the ST segment gradually returns towards baseline and the T wave may remain inverted for several months. And again, the ST segment will be coving upwards in the presence of a myocardial ischemia or myocardial damage. The pathological Q waves uh, will be characterized by their depth in relationship to the R waves and also involving at least 40 milliseconds duration. A myocardial infarction that has been present for several years uh, may be characterized by a, a negative deflection Q wave representing myocardial damage and there may be some re generation of the R wave signified by the positive deflection and the ST segment uh, will become isoelectric and the T wave may become upright and this is an example of a chronic or an old myocardial infarction. Now let's look at two other conditions uh, that uh, mimic myocardial ischemia. One of them is a subendocardial ischemia. The subendocardial ischemia is characterized by ST segment depression from the baseline along with T wave inversion. This is a characteristic of subendocardial ischemia. If, if a person has same changes and if there is evidence of elevated cardiac enzymes, then it will be considered as a subendocardial myocardial infarction or non Q wave myocardial infarction. The ST segment depression to a certain degree may also be seen in patients with left ventricular hypertrophy. In those situations, we call this condition as left ventricular hypertrophy with strain pattern. The left ventricular hypertrophy with strain pattern is quite different from a subendocardial ischemia or infarction which is uh, seen in association with uh, coronary ischemia. Another condition that we need to keep in mind is symmetrically inverted T waves. When the T wave, the downslope and the upslope are symmetrical and when the depth of the T wave is more than 5 millimeters and the width of the T wave is uh, large, then it represents ventricular ischemia. Generally, we see this type of T wave changes in the anterolateral leads suggestive of anterolateral ischemia. One of the conditions that we need to consider as a differential diagnosis for T wave inversion would be intracranial hemorrhage, which would result in giant, which would result, which would result in giant negative or large negative T waves in the chest leads. So in conclusion, this slide practically covers all types of myocardial ischemia starting with hyperacute phase of acute myocardial infarction, then recent myocardial infarction, a myocardial infarction with myocardial necrosis, 
a cro chronic myocardial infarction followed by subendocardial ischemia or infarction and finally T wave changes. One more condition that we see that may suggest myocardial ischemia may be non-specific non T wave changes which generally reflects flattening of the T waves or minor negative T waves which may sometimes represent myocardial ischemia. Keeping this in mind, now we should be able to one, recognize the acuity of a myocardial infarction and we should also be able to differentiate between a transmural myocardial infarction versus a non-transmural myocardial infarction.